Hi everybody, good to see you back on my YouTube channel. ESP Home rings a bell to any experienced home automation enthusiast. Typically, ESP Home runs on devices equipped with ESP32 microcontrollers. However, it is also possible to use ESP Home with other devices and other microcontrollers. Have you heard before about WB3S Wi-Fi module with a backend microcontroller? No worries if you haven't, it is a rather mysterious module. Stay tuned, we are going to explore it from hardware to software and we're gonna have this simple ESP Home demonstration. In this video, I'll show you the exact steps how to get started with ESP Home on a module called WB3S found in Tuya devices. It's gonna be a long ride, so fasten your seatbelts. Let's start this adventure with an unboxing. I designed the printed circuit board, which was manufactured by the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. If you're working on a prototype and need a great quality with a quick delivery, visit PCBWay.com. Thanks to them, I received six pieces of these two-layer blue printed circuit boards. PCBWay are capable of manufacturing printed circuit boards with up to 14 layers. They support different colors for the solder mask, and if you're looking for something fancy, you can even order UV printing Moody cover for your board. But that's not all. PCBWay also offers additional services such as PCB assembly, 3D printing, CNC, metal sheet fabrication, and even injection molding. PCBWay.com is one-stop shop for all your manufacturing needs, no matter if you're working on a prototype or you're ready for mass production. I use the free and open source software KiCad to design this very simple two-layer printed circuit board. Sharing is caring, so the whole KiCad project with all design files is available at GitHub. This little board is entirely open source hardware. As a long-time Linux user, I deal with KiCad on Ubuntu Linux distribution. However, KiCad also works on Mac OS and Microsoft Windows, so you can use it no matter what kind of operating system you prefer. After completing the schematics and the PCB view, I've exported the Gerber and the drill files from KiCad, uploaded them to PCBWay.com and placed an order. I just needed a few prototypes and PCBWay.com did a great job. Here is a closer look at the printed circuit boards. Excellent quality, very quick delivery to Europe. There are literally hundreds or even thousands of development boards built around ESP microcontrollers, but it is not the same with backend. And it, you might be wondering, how did I end it up with a WB3S module? Long story short, a friend recommended me this really cheap um, smart dimmer switch from a Chinese company LSC and inside of it I found a battery which is quite useful for various projects and this module. I bought several of these devices for purely experimental purposes. Although they're brand new, here we're gonna start with an unboxing and we're gonna quickly follow up with a complete tear down. This uh, smart dimmer switch is wall mountable, so there is a magnetic uh, mounting plate and there are four screws. Using a screwdriver, I'm going to remove each one of these four screws so that I can access the battery and the printed circuit board. The whole disassembly procedure took me less than three minutes, but I have to admit it was a little bit boring compared to the things that we're gonna do later on, so thanks to the magic of video editing, I've increased the speed. Here is a closer look at the printed circuit board. It runs on batteries that are charged from a USB-C connector, there is an on-off switch and a rotary encoder for the dimmer. The brain of this printed circuit board is the star of our video, the Wi-Fi module WB3S. I have no doubts that this smart dimmer switch has been manufactured in huge quantities, so the module has been assembled using pick and place machine and soldered using the surface mount technology. Using the help of my soldering iron and most importantly of my hot air solder station, I'm going to remove the module from the original printed circuit board. To save everyone's precious time, I have again increased 
the speed of this part of the video, the whole process took me less than 4 minutes. As a result, I have a module that I can use for my breakout board that I have designed with KiCad and PCBWay manufactured for me. Let's zoom in and have a closer look at the module that I've just desoldered. You can clearly see that not all of the pins were soldered to the PCB of the dimmer. On the back of the WB3S module there are white seal screen labels that indicate the function of each pin. I found only a datasheet in Chinese which isn't useful at all for me. However, the documentation of the LibreTiny project provides the exact pinout with each function. I quickly found out that the Tuya WB3S module is pin-to-pin -pin compatible with ESP12 modules manufactured by AI Thinker. They were quite popular a few years ago and actually I have designed several open source hardware devices around them. They feature ESP8266 microcontroller. So initially I used one of the old boards that I have for uh, AI Thinker modules and I soldered the um, WB3S module on it. After that I designed this breadboard friendly board especially for the module that now I have. Back on my soldering desk I had to solder and assemble one of the breakout boards that I've designed. Everything had to be done by hand. First I soldered the module to the breakout board. For this I used my Veller soldering iron and another fume extractor, an open source gadget that I've designed and you can actually purchase which keeps the dangerous fumes out of my face while soldering. After that I've soldered the male header pins which are used to attach the breakout board to a breadboard. Here is the end result. I'm proud of it. Don't judge me too hard, keep in mind that I'm a software engineer. Testing a new printed circuit board, even with a single component, has several steps. Obviously the first one is to make sure that the breakout board mechanically can fit different breadboards. And it does. I'm satisfied with the end result because the breakout boards fit really well on a breadboard and it leaves a lot of space for experiments. With this board, I think I'm ready for ESP Home Adventures. ESP Home is a very popular open source framework that simplifies the process of creating custom firmware for home automation. No coding is required, you just need to configure a YAML configuration file instead of writing source code in C++ or another programming language. ESP Home is very popular among do-it-yourself enthusiasts and smart home hobbyists. It is most commonly used for devices with microcontroller from the Espressive ESP32 family, however it also runs on other devices such as Raspberry Pi microcontrollers and as in our our case a backend microcontroller. For it and other microcontrollers commonly used in Tuya devices, ESP Home Framework relies on another open source project called LibreTiny. The source code is available in GitHub, so give them a star. The hardware is ready, so now we can focus on the software. Let's install ESP Home. As an open source enthusiast, I'm using Linux distribution and in particular Ubuntu 24.04, so I'm going to show you how to install ESP Home from a Python virtual environment on Ubuntu. Of course, ESP Home development tools are not constrained only for Linux users, so if you are using a different operating system, you can do the same on it. Please have a look at the description of the video, I've shared the exact steps there. If you are a, an Ubuntu 24.04 user, you can just do copy and paste. If you're using something else, you may need to slightly adjust them. As you can see, I'm using ThinkPad T14 Generation 1. By the way, an amazing laptop, I've reviewed it in one of my previous videos. I opened the terminal application that is part of the GNOME desktop environment for Ubuntu 24.04 and I've initiated a Python 3 virtual environment. I activated the virtual environment and after that using the pip3 command I've installed ESP Home. Keep in mind that the installation will take a while depending on your internet connectivity because a bunch of files have to be downloaded. After successfully completing the installation I've typed in the command ESP Home 
version which of course shows me the version of the installed ESP Home. Using ESP Home is easy and straightforward, however it is not enough to complete my goals with WB3S. I need an additional software too to flush the chip inside WB3S, so I typed in pip3 install LT chip tool. After installing both of these tools that I need, I proceeded and I've used the ESP Home compile argument to build a firmware based on ESP Home configuration that I've prepared prior recording this video. Building the ESP Home firmware took some time, but as a result, I had a binary file ready to be flushed on my WB3S module. I created a very simple YAML configuration file for ESP Home, which starts a web server and turns on and off an LED. Let's have a quick look at it. Entering the download mode of WB3S is a little bit tricky, but we have to do it in order to flush the ESP Home firmware. Using a good stable 3.3 volts power supply is crucial, and we have it. To enter download mode, the backend microcontroller chip inside the module has to be rebooted while the flashing program is trying to establish a communication. According to the tutorials and the documentation that I read, in order to do this, I had to bridge the CEN pin to ground with a wire. However, as you have seen in the video, instead of doing this, I just turned on the board at the right timing when the program was trying to establish a communication. This worked out really well and the LT chip 2 started flushing the ESP firmware binary over serial communication to my board. The whole flushing process took me a bit more than a minute. There is a very clear indication in the terminal while the uh, writing of the data over the serial communication is going on. Once it's complete, you're gonna see the message uh, finished. This means that the firmware has been successfully flushed. It's short time. Let's see if this works. This home firmware on WB3S works straightforward. First, it tries to connect to my Wi-Fi network. As you have seen, as part of the configuration before compiling ESP Home, I had set the name of the network and a password. Upon successful connection to my Wi-Fi network, the Wi-Fi router provides a local IP address to the breakout board with WB3S. The ESP Home firmware launches a web server on this IP and port 80. So on the laptop I've opened the Chrome web browser and I've entered this web page. I'm sure most of you are already familiar with ESP Home web server uh, user interface and user experience so I won't go into that much details. You can see that there is a knob which allows me to turn on and off the LED that I connected on the breadboard. This web user interface supports two covering schemes. I prefer the dark one, this way you can see better the orange LED. This is probably one of the most simple demonstrations that we can do with ESP Home. However, it is enough to confirm that ESP Home works on WB3S and backend microcontrollers. ESP Home provides numerous options for attaching various peripheral devices and, of course, integration with Home Assistant. For a regular person, turning on and off LED remotely means nothing, but for engineer, this means that the demonstration is successful. ESP Home is an amazing open source firmware that runs natively with Home Assistant, and it supports not only the very popular ESP32 microcontrollers, but also alternatives such as backend microcontrollers and modules like this one, which can be found in Tuya devices. So you have the advantage that you can eventually reflash and repurpose a Tuya device using ESP Home. There is a very long list of disadvantages in terms of the software support for the WB3S module and the backend microcontroller BK7231. There is an open source initiative called LibreTiny which tries to fix this and because of it we can actually um, compile and run ESP Home 
on gadgets like this one. However, as of the moment, there is no SPI support, there is no I2C support, even the Bluetooth low energy doesn't work. So definitely my verdict is that if you are looking for a do-it-yourself device, you better use ESP32 microcontroller if you are planning to do it with ESP Home. So let's summarize. Now you know the exact steps how to flash ESP Home on Tuya's WB3S Wi-Fi module with backend BK7231T microcontroller. In terms of hardware specifications, it supports Wi-Fi and Bluetooth Low Energy Point Port 2. There are 15 GPIOs, six of which are PVM capable, two are available for UART and one is available for analog to digital conversion. The ESP home port is based on the open source project called LibreTiny. As a conclusion, I want to say that it was a quite an interesting experience to learn how I can flush ESP home on WB3S module with a backend microcontroller. However, it's not worth the effort if you are planning to use this for anything serious. Maybe it could be useful if you are having in mind to repurpose an off-the-shelf device that's compatible with Tuya. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and hit the like button. Hope to see you soon.